Good morning and welcome to Calvary Episcopal Church online worshiping community. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. It's November the 29th in 2020, and we are so glad you're here to worship God together with us in this virtual way. Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to Mary, engaged to a man named Joseph. And he came to her and said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. On this first Sunday of Advent, we light this first candle, remembering the angel, God's messenger who startles us awake with words of hope and love, offering a path with new life before us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, as we begin this Advent season, we give thanks for the ways in which you keep speaking into our lives. Give us fresh eyes to see your messengers before us and open ears to hear your call for life and justice. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, to you, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, 
we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake in your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your presence known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no one has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There was no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. The Psalm appointed for the first Sunday of Advent in this new year of liturgical readings is a portion of Psalm 80, found in your service bulletin. We will read it together. Hear, Hear O shepherd, shepherd of Israel, Israel leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore, Restore us, O God, God of hosts. Show the, Show the light, light of your countenance, and, and we shall be saved. Let, Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The Son, the Son of Man you have, you have made so strong for yourself, and, and so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we, that we may call upon your name. name. Restore us, O God, oh Lord of God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord, Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By Him you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, 
the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Earth and heaven will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Amen. Every Monday evening at 5.15, I officiate a service of healing on the Calvary Facebook page. I use a combination of the Calvary Healing Service liturgy that we were doing inside, right here in the church, and we will do again, and the Book of Common Prayer from New Zealand. Toward the end of the service, I pray this from the healing service in the New Zealand prayer book. God of the present moment, God who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart, bring hope and courage to us all as we wait in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make us the equal of whatever lies ahead. Bring us courage to endure what cannot be avoided, for your will is health and wholeness. You are God, and we need you. Amen. This prayer was perfect for the uncertain energy at the beginning of the pandemic. When, our, our, when in our naivete, we had absolutely no idea what was going to happen. I recently looked at the notes that I took at the very first meeting of clergy with our bishop on Zoom on Friday, March 13th. And my note said, we will need to close down for a couple of weeks, but might be able to open for Easter. We did not know what we did not know. Now, I continue to use that prayer every Monday night online. We know a lot more, but we continue to wait in uncertainty. And as we enter into this first week of Advent, that prayer speaks to not only the waiting, in a global pandemic, but to the waiting we are all doing in our lives, an Advent's reminder that we live in the midst of two different modes of time. The ancient Greeks understood this and taught us this, that, and we still live in these modes. Kairos, or time outside of time, eternal time, God's time, Kairos can be translated as the right moment, the exact right moment for a decision or an action. The right time is always God's time, but not chronological time. That's called chronos, the time we have to live by, measured time, the time we schedule our appointments, the time when we set our clocks forward and backward in the spring and fall, the time that we strap onto our wrists. 
Advent speaks in this tension of time. We wait for God's fulfillment of the promise to bring peace and justice to an aching world while we live in the in-between of our own time, day-to-day -day moments that don't always seem at all momentous to us. The in-between time from when God sent Jesus into the world as human and the time to come, for the second arrival of the Messiah. I really don't know about you, but I also really don't think that the disciples understood fully Jesus' words about his return. I know I don't understand them now, but I do understand waiting, and I understand hope, and I know what a promise means. Before the past eight months, we might have thought we understood waiting. Now we really do. We are waiting for so many things. We're waiting for that return to normal, for the right vaccine. Thanks be to God, it looks like that is coming soon. We're waiting for a political scene that doesn't demand our attention every minute of every day. We've had so many plans that had to be canceled or rescheduled. So many hopes for this year that did not come to fruition. We miss people we craved a hug and have a cup of coffee with while sitting really close and sharing stories. Waiting has taken on an entirely new meeting. We really know what waiting is about now. Meanwhile, while we wait, we continue to live and to try to stay connected to the things that have meaning to us, rituals that are redone, reimagined worship services like this, normal family routines that have to be recreated, jobs that used to work just quite well in offices with colleagues now being done at home on a dining room table and a computer. Like we are called to wait for the return of the Christ, for the time when God's dream of creation will be utterly fulfilled, we are called to wait for the return of our full lives. But I've noticed in these months as we wait that things are beginning to change. Perhaps the fulfillment of God's dream of peace, justice, and abundance for all is in fact inching forward in God's right time. The events of this summer following George Floyd's death show that people are not going to be patient with inequality anymore. Watchwords for institutions and society are words like pivot, flexibility, creativity, innovation, letting go of what's not working anymore. Those watchwords work for the church as well. As horrible as this pandemic is, perhaps we are seeing, not just in the outskirts of our sight, but right in the middle of where we are, perhaps we're seeing that God is at work among us inspiring us. Richard Rohr, the contemplative monk, writes, Come, Lord Jesus. The Advent mantra means that all of Christian history has to live out a deliberate emptiness, a chosen non-fulfillment. Perfect fullness is always to come. But that means that the field of life is wide open to a future created by God rather than created by ourselves. And this is exactly what it means to be awake. Other words are aware, alive, attentive, alert. Come, Lord Jesus, opens the future for the full picture that is always given by God, a leap into the freedom and surrender that we call the virtue of hope. 
the theological virtue of hope is the patient and trustful willingness to live without closure, without resolution, and to live fully in the time that we have been given now, even as we recreate and reimagine the things that are so important to us. If you're like me, you like to tie things up neatly with a bow, but that is not living fully into this open future that God is in charge of. In this Advent time, as we wait in our Kronos time to enter into our beautiful and beloved world again fully, we also wait in the Kairos of God's time, experiencing deep change and seeing that perhaps no, I think truthfully, God is at work through the Holy Spirit, preparing us not for our past, which is over and done with, but for our future as a people beloved and called to co-create with the Christ a future of justice and abundance, full of love and grace for all. Come, Lord Jesus. Inspire our imaginations and energy to live as fully as we can and with hope and trust in you. In this waiting time, give us the hope of Zechariah, of Elizabeth, of Mary and Joseph, of John the Baptist, of all of the first disciples who experienced the incarnation and life of the first coming of Jesus the Christ. Bring us hope. Bring us courage. Bring us love. Amen. Let us join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Ever-present God, guide and inspire us as we look for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers and strengthen us to the end as we pray. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. We give thanks to you, our loving God, for the grace you have given to us in Christ Jesus. Enrich your church in speech and knowledge and action that we may be awake, alert, and blameless. We pray for the Lusitanian Church and the Right Reverend Jorge Pina Cabral. We pray for Michael, the presiding bishop, and Craig, our bishop. We pray for foundations that minister to children with special needs, especially remembering the work of the Sheltering Arms Foundation.
for all who work in child protection agencies throughout Minnesota, and for the faith community of St. Nicholas in Richfield. At Calvary, we give thanks for our parents who are the primary faith formers of their children and grandchildren. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of, light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Make your name known, Almighty One, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. Gather the elect from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven, that all humanity may know that we are the work of your hand and the sheep of your flock. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Come among us with great power and glory, O shepherd of your people. Shine forth and give to all the earth the light of your presence. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Be near to this community at our very gates and within our hearts. And do not hide your face from us, that we may know your glory in the evening and at midnight and at dawn and not be found asleep at the day of your coming. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Compassionate God, come with your healing grace for those for whom we pray, especially Hal, Ray, Al, Christy, Jonna, Michael, Alan, Simon, Bill, Tom and Ruth, Simon and Denise, Dan and Holly, Evelyn, the Kruger family, and all who come to Rochester for hope and healing. We give thanks for the grace and peace that come from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, offering our special gratitude for the Calvary Altar Guild. May your angels gather your beloved into the day of your triumph as we remember those who have died, especially Carol Kruger, grandmother of Christopher Kruger. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. We give gratitude for the beautiful flowers on our altar today and give thanks to Suzanne and Edward, David Edwardy who have given these in thanksgiving for their children and grandchildren and to the glory of God. Holy One, you are the potter and we are the clay, the work of your hand. Shine forth upon your creation, stir up your strength and come to help us as we put our trust in you, O God, through our Savior Jesus Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned against you, you in thought, word, word and deed, deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome again to our service on this first Sunday of Advent at Calvary Episcopal Church in Rochester, Minnesota. We're so glad you're here. Just a couple of announcements. If you are a member of Calvary, you should have received or picked up um, your Advent resource box. If you did not receive one and you are here in our, in our database and on our rolls, which is what we use to, to um, create this list, please give us a call right away in the church office tomorrow, Monday, and we'll make sure you get the resources that we have for you. I want to again thank all who have pledged, who've made their pledge to God's work here at Calvary thus far. We have a few weeks left in our pledge drive. We want to try to pull this to an end on December the 20th. So you may put your pledge card in the mail. You may take a picture of it and email it to Phil Malley, our bookkeeper, or in some way let us know what you would like to give to God's work here through your pledge for 2021.
Thanks very much. And finally, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, please go online to Calvary's YouTube channel. There you will find our Advent procession, which we offer every first Sunday of Advent. Brian Williams and members of our choir and members of our congregation have worked very hard over the past few weeks to put together a virtual Advent procession for you to enjoy in the comfort and safety of your home. It's a gorgeous service, and I certainly hope you will take the time to watch it. In that Advent procession, you will also see our beautiful tree in the Oasis Garden that's lit up for the season. This year, due to the generosity of a family who normally gives the tree in Brackenridge Hall, but couldn't this year, Dr. Jack Spatel, we have two trees lit in our Oasis Garden this year. And we hope you'll enjoy that, both in our YouTube virtual Advent procession, but also if you drive or walk around here in the evening, you will see these trees lighting up the darkness. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord. And, and of, of thine, thine own, own have, have we, we given, given thee. thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, in remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal Eternal God, God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you you have have graciously accepted us as living living members members of your your Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the creator, our redeemer, and our life giver, our sustainer, is upon you and will remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to you.